welcome everyone. Um, I'm a milliner, that is a hat maker. Uh, so I will be referring to a milliner and you'll know that's somebody who makes hats. A hatter is somebody who makes men's hats. A milliner makes women's hats. So Stephen Jones, a famous milliner said, in 500 years, people are going to look at this era in time and say, what a crazy period this is. Why? Because so few people are wearing hats. Look at this. This is normal every day pre-World War II times in Europe. And you think it's just the women. You wouldn't leave the house without a hat on. Now, what happened, according to Stephen Jones, was World War II, after which a hat became a symbol of the old Europe. And this was the new Europe. And sadly, in my opinion, they adopted the casual, hatless styles of the United States. I'm positive, and Stephen Jones is positive, this is just a phase. There is little that makes a statement more than a hat. And I'm sure some of these images are, uh, you've seen these before. Now, when I walk into a room, I'm usually wearing a hat. And a lot of people tend to look at me. And maybe a lot of you noticed me at the beginning, and you're looking, and it probably wasn't because of my trousers. And yes, these, these are trousers, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so, there's little that makes a statement more than wearing a hat. Simple clothes can be transformed into fashion. A waitress can be a princess. A shy teenager could be a cool rapper. The hats make all the difference. They can even be used as a mask. And I don't mean the type of mask that covers your face. It's a mask that can make you be somebody else. There's a tribe, there are tribes, as you just saw. <laughs> they don't wear any clothes but they always decorate their heads. Now, a hat can make anyone the person that they want to be. And I'm going to encourage you to try to wear a hat, but more on that later. So, why hats? Why me? Oh, this is more some hats that I made. <laughs> this is me. This is me when I was little. And I'm not embarrassed. I love dressing up. I loved wearing hats. It's just how I am. And a little bit later, I grew up and I'm still the same. I still dressed up and did crazy things and I'm still the same person now. I always loved making things, I always loved hats, and well, I'm a hat maker, but before I became a hat maker, I was working in the financial sector for five and a half years. I wanna show you this picture. This is my desk at the bank and <laughs> I wanted to show you this because I questioned, what did I do? I was working at the bank, I was working hard, I had a good salary, I had great colleagues. This is Luca, he covered Italy, I covered the UK, Ireland, and the Netherlands. Um, I had a great time, but what did I do? What did I do that week, month, year, years? I couldn't see it, I couldn't touch it, I couldn't smell it, I couldn't taste it. I needed to see the fruits of my labor. And so I decided to make a big step. I left my job at the bank and I went to the Womburn School of Millinery and I learned how to make hats. Uh, where you can really see what I'm doing and um, of course it gives a lot more satisfaction to me than, than when I was at the bank. What I would do after I was at work at the bank is I would come home and I would knit. I would knit. And what's so amazing is with every stitch I could see this this, so let's say, scarf, grow and grow. And it was something I was making with my own hands by myself. And it's an incredibly satisfactory feeling. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to show you a little in pictures how I make hats, because you may wonder, why would somebody pay two or 3,000 RMB for one of my unique handmade, tailor-made hats when you can buy one on Taobao for two or 300 kwai or at the market? I will show you why. It starts like this. I brought some props to show you. This is a hat mold. But it starts like this. I put on my waterproof apron that my Welsh granny gave me. I put on my rubber gloves. And I take my bucket and I fill it with steamy, steamy hot water. Now what does this look like? It looks like I'm going to do the dishes. 
And I wanted to show you this because there's a very non-glamorous side to a glamorous occupation. There's beautiful magazines, there's celebrities, there's, there's amazing images, but there's also a side I wanted you to see, and that's this. How do I make hats? It starts with the felt. This is wool felt. There's also fur felt. This is a cone or a hood. We don't buy felt in rolls or meters or yards like a fashion designer would who makes clothes. And the felt is put in this steamy hot water until it's completely soaked and it's pulled over the hat mold. This is a wooden hat mold. I do not make these. There are very few people that make hat molds anymore in the world. This is an art form in itself, people that make hat molds, also called hat blocks. This one was made by a man named Guy Morris Brown in the UK, and that's also where I went to my millinery school. And I've used this shape probably more than any other shape. Now, we pull the felt over the mold and pin it into place. That's the next slide. In the, in the slides I'm showing you two different hats, the red one and the green one. The red one being this mold and the green one being a men's trilby. You can see the pins, these are called blocking pins in the wood, and it dries. What's interesting about the top of the trilby is that you need to make that dent in the top and that's quite labor um, intensive because you fold up cotton and you have to pin it in with a little machine called a pin pusher. That's this little machine right here. And I don't think there's another industry in the world that uses a pin pusher but millinery. Once the felt is dry, this can take around three days. It's removed from the mold and you need to trim it, cut the excess off, and you sew in the inside trim. Now, I do this all by hand. I do every stitch myself, and that's, you may think, why not use a sewing machine? I have a sewing machine, but I hardly ever use it because I, um, I, I use it maybe once a year when a client has ordered a hat. I make tailor-made hats for clients who, that really needs a sewing machine. What's so great about the control I have when I'm sewing something by hand is that that needle I can decide whether it goes a fraction of a millimeter to the left or the right of where I'm pointing. And that's, um, that's a very wonderful thing to be able to do. I'll take this off and keep showing you. I just need the notes back, please. And oh, here's a quick example of um, the same thing I just showed you except an antique mold with a material called paracesol. Now this is a hand-woven uh, straw. And just quickly, you can find still antique molds in uh, markets in Europe. Again, the material's made wet, pulled over the mold, pinned, dried, here's your final product. It's an amazing thing to do. So, that's the traditional way of making hats. But of course, that's a basis. Once you know that, the world is yours. You can go crazy. These are some hats I made uh, out of non-traditional millinery materials. I like to use wood. This, this is wood, bamboo, plastics, seagrass, but I've also used metals, even paper. I mean, CCTV's here doing a documentary on me, and they gave me a challenge. They said, yeah, you like to make hats out of funny things? And they gave me a pack of playing cards and said, make a hat out of that. And I did. I did. <laughs> now, back to your Taobao hat. This is how that's made. In a factory, where it's going to, your same wool felt, quality may vary, is going to be put over your mold and pressed into shape. So there's a mold on the bottom like I have, but there's also a mold on the top. And it's pressed into shape and it'll go on a kind of conveyor belt like this. No, that's why. So, what drives me? I want to tell you a story here and while I tell you I will go on with some pictures. Besides these fabulous images that you get out of being a hat maker, uh, what happened was, I was at a party here in Beijing, and I was wearing a fabulous hat, as I always do, and everyone's looking at me, and oh my god, Tasha Shea, who's that? She's wearing a crazy hat. And a lady comes up to me and says, I'm the accessories professor of Beifu University. Now, Beifu is the Beijing Institute of Fashion Technology. It's a very famous university for fashion here. And this is the accessories professor. Now, hats fall under accessories, in case you didn't know. Where did you get your hat? It's amazing. I made it. Oh my God, you made it. How did you make it? I have a studio here. Can I bring my students to your studio? Of course. So she comes to my studio with her students 
and I'm showing her my hat molds, and by the questions they're asking and the way they're looking, it's pretty clear to me they've never seen a hat mold before. And I'm thinking, these are the accessory students of Beifu. How can they not know this? So I asked the inevitable, how do you guys make hats? Oh, we use a pattern and a sewing machine. Ah, this was such a point of realization for me that I thought, of course, these kids are learning to make hats that can be produced by the hundreds, thousands in a factory. They're not making, they're not learning how to make a hat just once with one feather or lace or, and it was just a moment of realization that I'm really doing something special here. Uh, here are some more of my hats, and back to Beifu, they asked me to come give them lessons. Uh, this is, uh, there's a picture coming of me giving them a demonstration at Beifu University, but I kind of got scared when they wanted to film everything, and then they wanted to borrow all my molds to have a carpenter make some, and I, I didn't say yes. So, <laughs> this is, um, this is, this is something that was a bit alarming for me. But what drives me? What drives me is that I'm doing something here that's authentic. Every one of my hats, you can take it apart, you can take this thread out. It's, there's nothing secret. It's an honest expression of me, of my energy. I, I put my time into it. There's a value in hand craftsmanship. Um, besides that it's so unique, there's, okay. If somebody says, do you want the homemade cookies or do you want the factory cookies? Everyone's gonna take the homemade cookies. They look better, they smell better, they taste better, the ingredients are probably better. There you go, I mean, I make handmade hats. The quality's better. Not that I'm all anti-factory, but, you know, it's gotta be said. What I do is unique. It's a unique thing that is mine, it's uniform, it's me, it's a part of me. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't, if anyone knows of any other milliners here, let me know. I haven't found them. I mean, when I came here, I thought, I'll get materials at the millinery supply shop down the road. There is no millinery supply shop in all of China. And I know this for a fact. But it's been a blessing in disguise because it's forced me to look at what I do have available. I, I don't have access to the things I would have access to in Europe, but that's made me make hats I never would have made otherwise. So, this is another amazing image. I need your help with something. If you take anything away from my talk today, I need your help. And this is also a bit of a dare. I dare you to go home, put on a hat, and wear it outside. And help me stop this crazy era of no hat making, hat wearing, and wear some more hats outside. Thank you very much.